Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, so today we're gonna be bringing you the must-know tips and tricks for the Galaxy S24 series. This works with all S24s. I'm gonna be doing it on the Ultra, but honestly, most of these features are gonna work on all three. Now, if this is too fast for you, slow it down, go back, make sure you catch up on each step. And if it's too slow for you, then jump to the part you really wanna to get to. But this will make your phone much faster and have about five hours longer battery life. Let's get started. All right, now while most of these features are gonna make your phone faster and also have much longer battery life, I do always do two features that I have done more in-depth videos for, but that make your phone so much better and that most people don't know about. So first and foremost is Quick Share. Basically, you can send 4K videos at perfect quality. Yes, you're not gonna get a grainy text message if you send it to an iPhone, doesn't matter. If you share it this way, it's going to be perfect. So first, you just select whatever you wanna share, click the share button, quick share down here at the bottom left. And then you hit this little QR code right here. And with this QR code, you tap this copy URL. Once you do that, it's going to be uploading in the background, all of those video files to a link that's going to be available for a little over 24 hours. They have 24 hours to download the video and watch it in perfect quality. You can send this via email, via text message, any which way, and they have the ability to see it in perfect quality. So no more grainy videos coming from your Galaxy S24. The next feature is gonna be GoodLock. Now GoodLock is available in Samsung's store, and the whole idea behind it is you get better features than come on the phone, but these features are still in lab, so that's not out to the public yet, but they're so good and they're really stable. So I just always recommend going ahead and doing it so you can have a much better phone experience. This is it right here, good luck. Go ahead and open it. And if it is available in your country, it is going to be a plethora of things. Now I have done full videos on good luck itself, but it allows you to do so much and it's just so good for customization. I also do it for things like this to be able to just swipe from the side. Also, your multi-screen's better. Everything is just so much better if you use good luck, especially your camera quality, which I did go over in a separate video for how to take better photos and videos on the Galaxy S24. All right, but now let's start making your phone faster. First thing we're gonna do is you're gonna take away this. The Google Discover or Gal Samsung Free button on the sides are going to slow your overall home screen down and that just is just too slow. So this is gonna be much faster, much better for your overall speed. Second thing is you're gonna to wanna to get rid of any app that came with your phone that you don't need. Especially if you got a carrier phone, you get lots of bloatware from your carriers, whether it be Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, or any of the other ones out there, get rid of them if you don't need them, which most you don't. If you have like an account one, sure, keep it on there, but any other things you don't really need. So on the global version, I have pen up and that one I'm just gonna hold down, uninstall, don't really use this feature, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Bam, there you go. If you had any other ones that you don't really want to keep on your phone, Samsung does have a lot of different apps. Some are useful, some are maybe not to everyone's taste. So if you wanna get rid of them, feel free. All right, now we're gonna be going down the settings row to really set this phone up perfectly for you. However, there are some AI features towards the bottom, so we will go more in depth in those later on. So under the first section, connections, we're gonna to go to Wi-Fi and make sure our intelligent Wi-Fi is exactly what we want it to be. So these are a few things I I recommend making sure that you have switched on. Switch to mobile data when your Wi-Fi isn't that good. Switch to better Wi-Fi networks that are well known and automatically switch to the ones that you do use on a regular basis. This is gonna be really good so that it won't connect to a lot of ones on the road and it will connect to ones that are good quality. And detect suspicious networks is always important, obviously, just so no one tries to get into your phone without you knowing. In the next section, under connections, we're gonna to go to Bluetooth. Main thing you wanna know about Samsung is you can actually connect to two Bluetooth speakers or devices at the same time. You just swipe down here and go to media output. And then if you have two devices, you can actually play from two different devices. So that's a really cool feature that Samsung is known for and not a lot of other phone manufacturers can do. Finally, we're gonna to wanna to go to here and go to data usage. This is really important, especially after a week of using the phone, you get to learn your habits and how the apps you have installed on your phone are actually using your data. So one thing that's really important to see is if any app that you don't need to run in the background is running in the background and using up data, well, then you can just stop it from doing it. So not allowing it to have background data usage 
and it's that simple. I would definitely do this for games that you don't need to run data in the background, things like bank apps or anything that basically that you only need to run when you're running it. And then we go to connected devices and we talk about quick share again. So quick share again, normally deletes itself within a certain time period. You can extend that right here on set expiration and you can actually set it to six days now or six days and 23 minutes. Six days is fine for me. So I'm gonna leave it at that. You can also select your phone name if you want to share it for anyone nearby you. Kind of like how Apple AirPlay, Samsung has had Wi-Fi Direct for the longest time and so does the rest of Android. So you can just share between people in local areas. Now, in this next one, it's all about ecosystem. So you can connect this phone to say your tablet and call and text from your tablet. You can call and connect with other devices so you can use apps across multiple devices. And this camera on this phone could actually even be used as your web camera for your tablet. Really great features that you have in Samsung's own ecosystem. Now, Smart View is the last thing I'm gonna be going over here and that is Smart View allows you to connect to your Samsung TVs or any kind of smart devices. So for me, I have a fridge that has Samsung on it any kind of uh, Chromecasting can use it. But what most people don't know is you can actually do the reverse. You can actually stream, say, a TV on your phone. So if you have to go into the other room because you have to take care of something, hey, you can actually still continue watching the TV from your own phone. Now for modes and routine, you can set these however you want. Things I would suggest would be like, you know, turn off your ringer at work, uh, when you're driving, maybe take your lock screen off or things like that. Theater, make sure that you don't get notifications for two hours, you know, sleep, uh, turn off, do not disturb, and all of those features. Uh, lots of different uh, methods you can go into and change your modes as are needed. Sleep and theater are the main ones that I personally use. All right, next we're gonna move to sound and vibration. Main thing I want you to know here is at the bottom, sound quality and effects so always have dolby atmos on just a better experience equalizer obviously your preference but here's the one adaptive sound take the time put on some headphones and change your sound profile to your personal hearing this is so important and it's so much of an improvement over any other phone this does it to a t better than a lot of third-party apps do uh, that have a similar feature with headphones alone. This one really just stands out because it adapts all music, every sound that comes from your phone to this benefit. So yeah, really great and definitely would recommend for you. All right, then we move on to notifications. Main important thing I feel like is gonna be really important is under advanced. Make sure you're showing your battery percentage. I also don't like to show more than three recent icons for my notifications. And then one thing I am really liking so far that I used on my other S24 and now on this one is my permanent one, I have turned on show snooze button. I kind of like this so you can actually snooze a notification and come back to it later. It sometimes really helps, especially if you're having a busy day. All right, now we're going to go to display and this one's really important. So first off, I always recommend dark mode at all times. This saves you about two hours of battery life alone. So definitely having it on dark mode instead of light mode is better. Main reason why when the screen is black, all those pixels are off. So you save a tremendous amount of battery life by having dark mode on and the really good apps that are pitch black really save you so much more. So depending on your app, you really do save up to two hours just with this alone. Next is gonna be a controversial one. I do not like adaptive brightness. I never have. I usually keep my phone at this kind of brightness. Turned it down for this video just so you guys can see it through the camera. But I usually keep mine around 70% and that's kind of perfect all the way around. Main reason I don't like adaptive brightness is because sensors in here always on kind of take the point away of saving a battery life. So for me, just leaving it at 70%, it generally works out better when I've done previous tests in the past. But now with all the AI features, I will give it another go to see if I'm still correct. I turn extra brightness on, adaptive smoothness. If you want to save battery life, this will save you about an hour longer if you go by standard. And if you want a faster smooth experience for a top flagship, then go adaptive, uh, but it's up to you. I typically do like to use adaptive just because this one already has such a long battery life, 
but if you feel like your battery life's too short, this will give you another hour. All right, I don't really use eye shield comfort, but if you do, I would probably set it to a certain timer. So when I did, I used to set it very late night and uh, change the temperature. I usually don't use it because of the videos I do. So that's why I have it off usually. And then we move to screen mode. Now I have it on Vivid. I have it set to a little bit warmer than normal just because Samsung has admitted the terms of not being as vibrant as we had seen it before. Just have it a little bit warmer just because the colors are a little too dull for me at the moment. One mode I always wanna point out that people don't talk about enough and that is easy mode. Easy mode is literally made for the simplest mode. It makes an iPhone look extremely hard. It is very simplified phone. So if you ever want a very easy phone, Samsung has it on every single phone they come out with change it to easy mode and it's perfect for an elderly person, someone that can't see well, or any of those features, just to make it perfect and easy for anyone to use. Navigation bar is going to be different for everyone. I have a special set of features on here. Main thing you wanna know about though is the new circle to search. So basically if you hold down the navigation bar on the bottom right right here, then you can circle something and it will find whatever you're searching for. So if you're on a place like Instagram, you can just use circle to search by holding down the bottom find it and bam, then you'll find all different styles and everything like that, compare prices, whatever you wanna do, you can find it very easily just to see who's selling it and for what price. And then just go back and you're back on Instagram. Simple, easy, but really great if you ever want any information on how to buy something, where to buy something, or even just more information on something. Accidental presences you always want on, and when you do have a screen protector on, you do want to touch sensitivity turned up. Now, I don't have one yet. I am waiting for my white stone dome glass. So as soon as I get that, I'll put that on there and then I'll be all set. All right, guys, battery. This is gonna be the one where I really show you guys how to dramatically improve your battery life. So, a couple of tips here. First one is background usage limits and then deep sleeping. Now you can go a couple of the other ways, but deep sleeping is the way to go. As you can see, I have over 300 apps in my deep sleeping app area, and that's basically any app that I do not need to run in the background. Now, this would not pertain to things like text messaging, email, you know, any social media that you want notifications on, but anything that you don't need to run in the background, turn it off. Very simple, very easy. This saves you a ton of battery life. This alone will save you about three hours battery life just by this section alone, so make sure you do it. And always check because certain apps might put themselves in, you know, never turn off mode. Some are justifiable emails, photo backup, Samsung Health, those I'm fine with. But it's just some ones that sneak in there that I'm like, hey, you don't belong here, deep sleep. And so once we're done with this area, we're gonna go back and go to battery protection. Now, I actually recently did a video with Juan Carlos Bagnell about battery protection, and it's something that you wanna keep in mind, especially when it comes to long-term usage. I'm talking about if you want your phone to last multiple years, right? Two, three years, then you want to at least have basic on, adaptive, or in worst case scenarios, maximum. Basically, the more you keep your battery between 20 and 80%, the better. It's not gonna always happen that way. Sometimes you need to charge it more than 80%, but when you do at least just keeping it adaptive will help out your battery long term. So if you plan on keeping your phone for two to three years, then go ahead and turn that on. And then as we scroll down, last thing I wanna make sure you know about is wireless power share. This allows you to wirelessly charge devices like your smartwatches, your earbuds, or other devices with the back of your phone. No problem, it becomes a wireless charger, including an iPhone. As we move down, I want to go over home screen. There's one thing that I definitely wanna make sure all of you know about, and that is this one, lock your home screen layout. I personally do this for a lot of people, including my mom, my brother, my wife. This makes it so they can't move an icon or put things in the wrong area. All right, then we move to lock screen and AOD, always on display. Now, always on display is one of my favorite features. I use it, quite frankly, a lot, and I really do love it. You can turn it off if you want to save battery life. This will save you battery life, but if you do want to use always on display, make sure you turn this off. This was a feature that Apple introduced, a really bad feature, and honestly, it just really makes sense to turn that off so that you save more battery life. That alone will help you an hour longer battery life, whereas always on display itself will only help you about 20 minutes if you keep it this way. So you can turn always on display off if you choose to, but if you have both of these on, that would be an hour and 20 minutes drained of your battery. So make sure if you do keep always on display on, just make sure that it's show lock screen wallpaper turned off. Also, when to show. 
I always keep it on auto just because I used to have it on always, but now it does make the distinction between a dark area using the sensor. So if it is in your pocket, it won't be on always auto, always on display. So this makes it easier. Just keep it on auto. Now in security and privacy, there is a couple of things that I do want to let you know about. First thing is going to be updates. There are two different kinds of updates that you always want to check on. The security update is the overall update for the phone, but there is also a Play Store update that, you know, just check on every so often. Sometimes this doesn't update automatically and you can make sure to update it. Right now, it's still stuck on July for some reason on the latest phone, but I am assuming this will change within the next 30 days to be up to date to the current month. And you also want to take a look at lost device protection. Make sure these are on for yourself just so you can always get their phone back if you need it. And then as we scroll down, auto blocker is a interesting new feature that Samsung has allowed for. However, it is done with McAfee. So I personally don't like McAfee as much. If you ever are unsure about, you know, any apps or suspicious things using your device, then I would turn it on. But for me, I'm going to keep it off. Just I'm not the biggest fan of McAfee uh, from the PC realm. So if you are ever suspicious about anything bad ever being on your phone, then you want to turn this on. And then more security settings does show secure folder. Secure folder allows you to have a secondary phone. Really important if you plan on having this as a work phone too. You can actually separate your personal phone from your work phone so that your actual company cannot see your personal side. They can't see your text messages. They can't see anything on there. You can separate your phone into two phones and your IT department literally couldn't know. All right, and then we're going to go to advanced features. This is a lot of stuff because we are going to mainly be talking about AI in this section. So let me walk you through everything. First of all, with phone calls, this is going to allow you to live translate. I have actually used this and I'm not sure which version I like better. You can give the ability to hear the other person or you can mute each other so you only hear the translation. I really do love this feature though. It was really cool to be able just to talk to someone in Chinese and it perfectly translated everything in terms of proper diction. And that is the caveat. Of course, not everyone always speaks with proper diction, so it, it makes sense, but it is a little bit, oh, okay, I see where you're talking about or how you're saying it, but you have to talk very basic in order to do it. So I think this is perfect for making reservations in another country is a perfect example of when you could use this and it would really be great for that purpose. And you can also do this so that you have a person preset for this. So if you have say a mother-in-law or brother-in-law that speaks another language, you can have it set so that that translation will always happen when calling that person. And you can set the language and everything you want it to be when you need it. Then we have Samsung keyboard. Now this one can do the same thing on chat translation. And this is so important because it's on the keyboard, you can actually translate it in any messaging app, whether it be WhatsApp, whether it be text messaging, whether it be Microsoft Teams, Google Chat, any of them, I have used this to great effect and I really like this. You also have style and grammar, which is kind of an interesting one. You can make a general message and then move it over to being more professional, being more social media heavy. It'll even give you hashtags, all that kind of stuff. Very cool feature just to be able to have built into the keyboard. And then we have the interpreter. This is very similar to Google Translate. I would probably still use Google Translate over this one, but one thing this does have is very simple, just basically back and forth, it will uh, create a translation between two people speaking a different language. Samsung Notes, if you do use Samsung Notes and your voice recorder, this will basically summarize your notes and messages and give them to you in a nice, easy and basic way to get them back. If they are all in a different language, by the way, it can translate the entire conversation to a new language. So basically, if I was in a room and two people were speaking Chinese, I could literally translate it and then understand exactly what they were saying. This will also summarize both forms as well, whether it be Samsung Notes or Voice Recorder. Similar on Samsung Internet, it can translate things and summarize, but I think the most one people will always use is Photo Editor. So Photo Editor, you really can make generative AI images. So it's really fun. You can make things bigger. You can make things disappear. You can erase things, all this kind of stuff. You have them. We'll go more in depth on that on a separate video. Make sure to subscribe, check that one out. Labs and S Pen are a little bit more in depth, so we will go into that in separate videos. However, motion and gestures, this is how I like to keep it and what I recommend you doing it. Double tap to turn the screen on, lift to wake, all of these sensors off, and palm to swipe capture is always just a fun way to take a nice screenshot.
And then down here, you are gonna wanna turn video brightness to bright. It just makes it all your HDR content look much better. Instead of this, you'll get this much better quality basically for all HDR content. Then we move to device care, which the main thing is just to always look at storage. If there are duplicate files, large files, or anything that you're unsure of or that you might not wanna use anymore, just check this area and it always gives you some recommendations as well. Then as we move down, another way to save battery life is right here. Performance profiles. See, standard is the default one, but you can go light. This will give you another hour of battery life if you happen to use it. Basically, it is going to optimize it to really be lighter, never use the cores to their full potential. However, if you're not a power user, you probably won't know the difference. So I actually put it on light for say my mom and my brother who don't use the phone to the full extent, but say for my power uh, friends that are a bit more techy, they play more games, definitely put it on standard for them. Then we move to auto optimization. This is a really important feature. Did you know you're supposed to restart your phone at least once a week? No? Well, this will make your phone much faster then. Do it to auto restart and basically set it something like this. So I set it every other day at 3 a.m. It's going to restart. That way, if I happen to be using it at 3 a.m. this day, it won't do it but when it is needed, I will have it restart. So this is a really good feature and definitely will improve your overall speed. Most people don't do this and that is why their phone runs slower. All right, then the last thing we always do is make sure that we unlock developer options to give you the absolute best way of browsing through your phone. So when we do this, we're gonna go to about phone, then software info. And then from here, you're gonna tap build number repeatedly. Gonna put in your password if you have one and then it will show you have unlocked developer mode from there you'll now be able to swipe a little bit lower and see developer options main thing you want to be able to know here is when you scroll down to the drawing category you make sure everything is at 0.5 now samsung has some presets that can make it turn off 0.5 is actually faster so it gives a much more fluid and much better overall feel to your phone than you had before. This will make it much faster and everything just transitions so much better. Yes, it should always be this way by default. I don't know why Samsung continues to not have it by default, but this is the absolute best way of moving through your phone. And all right, guys, hopefully you did like this video. If you did, please give a like, thumbs up down below. Remember to check out our best ways to improve the photo and video quality. That's a separate video our photo editing video, that's another video. And then finally, we're gonna have a tips and tricks video coming up as well. Thank you guys so much for watching everything. Make sure to subscribe to check out all the content. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Thank you so much again for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Also, follow me on social media at YouTube tech guy. And check out some more great tech videos on your screen right now.